July 1991 in Havana. It is Nelson Mandela's first trip outside Africa since his release from 27 years of prison. But why would the legend of struggle against oppression decide that the first person he wants to thank for helping to end apartheid is Fidel Castro, the very man who is regarded in the West as an oppressor of his own people? Fidel Castro and 500,000 Cubans took part in the African wars which ultimately ended colonialism. This little-known story began in 1960, only a year after Cuban revolutionaries triumphed. Their struggle had captured people's imagination, and the young feisty leaders, Fidel Castro and Che Guevara, emerged from three years of guerrilla war as heroes. The wave of independence in Africa was spreading like wildfire. That year alone, 17 African countries gained independence, and 30 others started their revolutionary armed struggle. African revolutionaries were looking to the Cubans as a model for their own independence. Cuba was living proof that David could beat Goliath. Quería referirme específicamente al doloroso caso del Congo, único en la historia del mundo moderno que muestra cómo se puede burlar con la más absoluta impunidad, con el cinismo más insolente, el derecho de los pueblos. Che Guevara was revolted, and his speech gave a clear signal that Cuba intended to act. The case of Patrice Lumumba in the Congo was symbolic of how African independence would be crushed by Cold War strategic interests. It was Lumumba's assassination that sparked a new era for many African revolutionaries, and with it started the epic of Cuba and Africa. The Congo, one of the largest and richest countries on the continent. The Belgian colony was demanding immediate independence. Patrice Lumumba, the young articulate clerk, led the movement that negotiated a peaceful solution to end Belgian rule. On June 30th, 1960, King Baudouin arrived in Leopoldville the capital named after his great uncle, to hand over power. Le roi Baudouin était dans une voiture découverte. Il saluait la foule, etc. Un Congolais s'est précipité sur la voiture. J'ai vu les, les gardes du roi dégainer. Et tout le monde avait peur, se disait, il va tuer le roi. Non, il a simplement sorti l'épée du roi de sa gueule. Et il s'est mis à danser avec cette épée. Euh, C'est très symbolique, ça. C'est comme s'il lui arrachait le pouvoir. On Independence Day, all the dignitaries assembled in Parliament. King Baudouin was to announce the transfer of power to the new government. Patrice Lumumba had just been elected prime minister. But the euphoria of independence did not last long. That same day, Lumumba lit a fire that spread through the entire continent. L'indépendance du Congo constitue l'aboutissement de l'œuvre conçue par le génie du roi Léopold II. Le discours du roi Baudouin, qui nous rappelait comment la Belgique nous a sorti de de l'esclavage, comment ils ont lutté pour nous sortir des maladies du sommeil, et patati patata. Ça a été un choc. Nous ne nous attendions pas à ce rappel malheureux, parce que nous estimions que le roi Baudouin n'avait plus de leçons à nous faire hein, ce jour-là. À ce moment-là, le monde se lève, qui n'était pas programmé comme devant parler à ce moment-là. 
il se lève et il parle. Il fait un discours très militant. Combattant de l'indépendance, aujourd'hui victorieux, je vous salue au nom du gouvernement congolais. Nous avons connu les ironies, les insultes, les coups que nous devions subir au matin, midi et soir, parce que nous étions des nerfs. Rappelez-vous comment on traitait le blanc par rapport au noir. Rappelez-vous dans les écoles quelle place nous occupions. Rappelez-vous tout l'apartheid. Alors évidemment, réaction immédiate de toute la délégation belge. D'abord, beaucoup d'agitation pendant que le monde parle. Qui oubliera en fait les fusillades ou périr tant de nos frères, ceux qui ne voulaient plus se soumettre au régime d'injustice, d'oppression et d'exploitation. C'était mal reçu par les Belges, mais nous, nous avons tout à fait répondu à nos, à nos aspirations. Et au moment du dîner, on demande à Lubumba de présenter des excuses. Il ne s'en fait pas. Il présente des excuses en disant « Je pensais que je devais dire à cet homme des choses, je les ai dites. Donc si ça a blessé, je m'en excuse et je demande qu'on tourne la page et que nous puissions voir les choses autrement. » Mais il était trop tard. La majesté était lésée. Et la majesté les a décidés le soir même de se venger et tout a commencé. Lumumba wanted to govern independently, but there were only 30 university graduates in the Congo. So it was agreed that for the next five years, Belgium would continue to run the important departments of the new state, including the army. The soldiers felt excluded from the newly acquired freedom. Within days, they started a mutiny, which led to the breakdown of the entire country. The troops were roaming the streets, all armed, and uh, it was it was quite a racial problem. The mutineers were there, and they had uh, matiti, that you know, bushes on their helmet, which was a sign that they were prepared for action, for combat. I can remember one yelling, "Venez, venez, sal flamand." We were all dirty Flemish. That was some some an expression that that meant you were really bad. And uh, we're going to kill you. More and more stories circulated about killing, rape, pillage, etc. It was, if you will, the Iraq of today. Le 10 juillet, le 10 juillet, retenez bien la date. Les militaires belges ont occupé l'aéroport de Njili ici. Ils ont organisé l'agression du Congo en disant, puisque les militaires congolais mutinés se sont attaqués aux femmes, aux enfants et aux officiers, la Belgique n'avait plus aucun autre moyen de protéger ses ressortissants que de faire venir des troupes belges le 10 juillet. Dix jours après. Le Mumba immédiatement tourne to the US pour support. The United States had never been a colonizing power, and their democratic principles seemed to guarantee support for people fighting for independence. Fidel Castro himself had chosen the U.S. as his first stop for support when his revolution triumphed a year earlier. But like Castro, Lumumba's attitude did not go down well with the Americans. I was in the lobby of the embassy when this little The Congolese clerk came in and he said he wanted 24 visas. He didn't know what a visa was. I said, well, do you have passports to put the visas in? Ah, no, patron, I, he didn't. So I, I explained to him what a visa was. And I said, why do you need 24? Well, he said, uh, Lumumba is going to the States to see President Eisenhower. I said, oh, that's interesting told him ambassador and he said well, i'm not aware of it so he checked and eisenhower said well if he comes i'll, I'll be here monsieur le secrétaire d'état je savais qu'il y a un réel plaisir 
que je me trouve aujourd'hui aux États-Unis, pays de démocratie et de liberté, pour prendre contact avec vous. Lumumba ne pouvait pas faire une pire impression sur le secrétaire de l'État et ses députés et d'autres personnes avec qui il s'est rencontré. Il a threaté, il a demandé des choses, including to have a woman sent around to his room. The visit was not a success, and it was clear that Washington would not come to his rescue. Just as Lumumba was leaving Washington, Cuba announced the nationalization of U.S. companies, and a trade embargo was immediately imposed on the island. Lumumba, like Castro, soon discovered that the Soviet Union was more than happy to help where the U.S. would not. At this moment, Lumumba commits probably the second error. He takes the decision, he sends a telegram addressed to Khrushchev to ask him to send the Union of the Soviet Union to come to chase the Belgians. This telegram, before he even comes out, is stolen from the Secretary of Lumumba by his former Secretary of the Cabinet, who is called Candolo Damien, who is called Candolo Damien, who is called Candolo Damien, qui s'appelait Candolo Damien. Larry Devlin s'accapare du télégramme, le transmet au gouvernement américain. We, we became aware of it almost immediately. And it came from uh, Congolese sources. Uh, that immediately alerted the Americans. I became wide-eyed at that. I said, ah, we have a problem here. He tried to play off the West against the East. Uh, it's an old game, but was relatively new at that time in Africa. But Larry Devlin didn't take it like that. He took it to say, the proof is there that the Lumumba communist is not consequent. Outre the fact that he insulted the king of the Belgium, he is a communist, so he has to chase the power. The Congo crisis was becoming more than just a local conflict in faraway Africa. The superpowers were taking a particular interest, especially Moscow, that had recently set up a bureau for aiding anti-colonial liberation movements. The Soviet Union was eager to help, or at least agreed to help, the legally elected Congolese government. It was in the last days of July, when a squadron of our Illusion 14 transport planes about 10 left for Leopoldville. By the way, they landed in Athens, and the airport, which was partly NATO base, it became a big noise. The whole noise about the Cold War started when we landed there. It was the first time that there'd ever been Soviets in that part of Africa, at least, certainly not the Congo, and very few in the rest of Africa, because the colonial powers were not desirous of having the Soviets there. Третий мир в этой войне был полем, так сказать, для охоты. Перевели вам? Полем для охоты. Почему? В Европе границы были забетонированы. Перейти границу означало начать атомную войну, которую никто не хотел. А третий мир, он был как будто без хозяина. Там была возможна свободная охота. Там можно было приобретать влияние. We believed, and I think it's true, that it was attempt to hold Congo as a base, especially as a base of minerals for the United States, for the West. We should not forget that the first atomic bomb was done of those uranium found in Congo. There are only two countries in the world that supplied cobalt at that time, Soviet Union and the Congo. And cobalt is extremely important for jet engines and all sorts of high technology. And we could not get it from the Soviet Union because it was a security commodity. So Congo was our only source. I suspect that the people in Washington began wondering where are we going to get our cobalt from if, if uh, the Soviets managed to control that. The United States deplores the unilateral action of the Soviet Union 
in supplying aircraft and other equipment for military purposes to the Congo. The Soviet action, which seems to be motivated entirely by the Soviet Union's political designs in Africa. I must repeat that the United States takes a most serious view of this action by the Soviet Union. Eisenhower fumed about aggressive Soviet support for his opponents. Soviet military aid for Lumumba arrived in the Congo only one month after the first Soviet arms shipment had landed in Cuba. To make matters worse, Castro openly declared that he intended to use these weapons to export his revolution. Eisenhower decided to send the CIA into action. I received a message saying that uh, people were in Washington were highly concerned about the activities of the prime minister and that uh, they hoped that he would go, you know, it would, it would be a change in the government. The next thing I knew, I received a cable saying that someone by the name of Joe would arrive in Leopoldville and I was to take my instructions from him. And the instructions were that I was to remove him physically from, <laughs> in other words, assassinate uh, the Mumba. I asked first, whose instructions are these? And he said, they come from President Eisenhower. The president wanted this done, and I, and I was to put together these poisons and bring them out to you. One of the poisons was a tube of toothpaste that had a poison in it, so that if he'd brushed his teeth with it, that was been the end of the man. All of these things I put in my safe because I didn't want them lying around the office. If somebody may say, may I use your toothpaste? <laughs> I felt that I had some pretty good operations going, and in the long term, my operations would achieve the objective of removing Lumumba from office, but not killing him. The Congo plunged into utter chaos. In the confusion, two separate secession movements broke away from Lumumba's government. The country desperately needed to be brought under control. The United States started to worry about it because the Soviets were backing Lumumba. So President Eisenhower said, well, we may have to use NATO there to keep the Soviets out. But finally, uh, cooler heads prevailed, and they asked the UN Security Council to send a peacekeeping operation to the Congo. President Eisenhower made some very basic policies which are still in existence today, and he said that if there are troubles in Africa, we don't want to have to send troops there, or Europeans should not send troops. It should all be done by the UN. Lumumba thought that the arrival of the UN peacekeepers would help him bring stability. He was wrong. The UN mission provided the missing ingredient to oust his government. Lumumba had just promoted his personal secretary, Joseph Mobutu, to army chief of staff. Mobutu was to coordinate with the UN troops to stop the country's descent into anarchy. Instead, he turned to Larry Devlin. Mobutu said that the army was very unhappy with the prime minister because he was turning the army over to the Soviets. He wanted to mount a coup d'etat, but there was one condition. They had to know that they would have the support of the United States government. I had tried and failed to achieve by legal means what they wanted, the United States government wanted. So I stood up and shook his hand. Finally, it took me a while to do this and said, I guarantee you the support of the United States government. And uh, the coup de, he said the coup will take place within a week, and it did. UN troops were supposed to protect the independence of Congo, but they would not allow the Congolese troops, which were loyal to Lumumba, to operate. The mission of the United Nations troops was misused to topple the regime 
of the government of Lumumba, or at least not to protect Lumumba. The troops of the Nations Unies will encircle the residence of the Prime Minister. Sans aucun mandat, sans aucune autorisation, il y a une crise interne. Les Nations Unies s'interposent et vont mettre le Premier ministre en résidence surveillée. Lumumba's supporters organized his escape. He was sneaked out of his house, bundled up in the back of a government car. Le Bruxelles répond que Lumumba était parti de chez lui. On a commencé à le chercher. Mobutu a demandé aux Nations Unies de lui donner des hélicoptères, on l'a poursuivi, on l'a arrêté. On les a mis dans un hélicoptère, on l'a ramené ici, ligoté, comme un vulgaire bandit. On Mobutu's orders, Patrice Lumumba was sent to his death. It was barely six months since Congo celebrated independence. C'était terrible. Vous enlevez, c'est lui qui est le flambeau, l'icône, tout d'un coup, comme ça, et, et d'une façon très barbare, en utilisant les mains africaines. Alors c'était frustrant, c'était écœurant, c'était un appel à l'insurrection populaire. Il faut venger cela. Ce pays est à nous et je vais me battre pour lui. C'est elle étincelle qui m'a fait conduire sur le chemin du maquis, de la guérilla. A witch hunt tracking down Lumumba's followers started in the capital. One by one, the Lumumbas fled to the safe haven across the river in Brazzaville. They organized themselves into an armed rebellion led by the 23-year-old Laurent Kabila. Lumumba's assassination resonated throughout the world. The shock was felt clearly in Cuba, where a large percentage of the population traces its origins back to the Congo. Cuba's young revolutionary leaders were appalled. The island declared a three-day official mourning in honor of Lumumba's memory. Cuba shared Africa's revolutionary quest for real independence. What happened to Lumumba could happen anywhere if no action was taken. Fidel Castro decided that Cuba could not stand by idly. So Che Guevara went on a two-month tour of Africa to assess how they could help local liberation movements. We are in train to construct the socialism on our earth and put our petty grains of sable au service de la grande aspiration de l'humanité. Che's public appearances hid the true objective of his mission. Cuba's future involvement in Africa was formulated at late night secret meetings with armed liberation movements from different parts of the continent. But Che's hopes were pinned on the Lumumbus Rebellion because Kabila and his men had already captured two-thirds of the Congo's territory. Je suis contacté par l'ambassade de Cuba qu'il y a euh, une haute personnalité cubaine qui vient d'arriver qui aurait bien voulu avoir contact avec nous pour s'entretenir avec les leaders du mouvement de libération. Je me pointe à l'ambassade de Cuba Je suis en face d'Ernest Che Guevara. Je me suis pincé moi-même. Je dis est-ce que c'est est vrai ou je, je n'en revenais pas. Pero no porque él confiara que el Congo iba a ser la base de la cual iban a irradiar las columnas para independizar a la África. Está seguro de eso. 
independientemente de la frontera, dentro de su concepción de la lucha revolucionaria, de lo que Debrey después llamó el foquismo, un foco guerrillero que irradia hacia las columnas, el Che partía de la ubicación del Congo para que fuera el epicentro de la irradiación de la independencia del África por la característica de las nuevas fronteras. Y dice, bueno, estamos dispuestos de prestar más fuerte. El objetivo es de formar el cadre de la revolución contra el neocolonialismo en Congo, donde hay ya un espacio muy amplio liberé. Todo lo que él promete es la ayuda de Cuba al movimiento de liberación, con armas, logística y un encadramiento. No solo de combatantes. Cuba had not yet devised a clear strategy of how to help liberation movements. But for Che Guevara, one thing was certain. Revolutionaries of the world had to create two or three Vietnams to keep their common enemy occupied on several fronts at once. The solidarity of the weak, or as they labeled it internationalism, was the only means to win an unequal battle. Che returned to Cuba and encouraged Fidel to give logistic support to African revolutions. He argued that Cuba could make a difference there, but he personally wanted to continue working in Latin America. When he comes to Cuba, he plantea esta conviction that he was not necessary here because the Cuban Revolution was consolidated and that he wanted to go to other countries. Pero lo primero que plantea es irse para América Latina. Y entonces, cuando se hace una valoración por Fidel y por todas nuestras dirigencias de la revolución, se llega a la conclusión de que todavía América Latina no tenía las condiciones de seguridad para que él fuera para allí. Está impaciente, pero él, él también la misión de África apreciaba mucho. Y entonces yo le propongo esto. En las condiciones de tarea muy importante que hacer que apoyar el movimiento guerrillero que está en el este contra Mobuto. Un buen día a finales del mes de enero fui llamado al Estado Mayor del Ejército Central e inmediatamente me dijo hace falta que empiece a reclutar a, a un grupo de 30 compañeros de la lucha contra bandidos y otro que tú conozcas, que sean negros bien negro era la palabra exacta en aquel momento, que estén dispuestos a, a cumplir una misión internacionalista, que puede ser que no regrese ninguno, me dice con claridad. For months, training was concealed in the depths of the Cuban forest. Soldiers were aware that the coming mission would be abroad, but none of them knew where or when it would take place. Dreke was the main contact with the leadership, but even he was in for a surprise. El compañero Mari se fue. Me va a ver y me dice, bueno, hay un comandante y te quiere saludar que hace tiempo que no te ve, que es muy amigo tuyo. Y me lleva varias fotos de una persona, un hombre blanco. Y le digo, oye, Mari, yo no, no me acuerdo, no lo conozco. Este comandante yo no lo conozco, pero un de ellos. Y pasan los días. Inventé unas cuantas gente de que te haría que conocieran a un amigo interesantísimo. Admito a Raúl y a... Y tú yo morzando. Y veo un señor que está sentado por allá. Dice, señor Mari, mira, ahí está el comandante Ramón. ¿Tú no lo conoces? Yo no lo conozco. Hasta que el señor interviene y le dice, no chive más, madre. Y le dice, yo soy el che. Ha sido una de las sorpresas más grandes que he tenido en mi vida, ¿no? Y ninguno lo conoció. Yo necesitaba de verdad. Sí, indiscutiblemente fueron muy capaces nuestra gente. ¿verdad? Y él eh, va entonces a un lugar de Pirandello. Tenía una casa y no sé. Y yo no sé lo que dice. Él escogió a la gente. Él quería. Y ahí sí enviamos un buen refuerzo con el Che. Que fueron alrededor de 150 hombres. Bien armados. Y con una experiencia. Eso era vital para la revolución. Que nadie conociera que era el Che. El Che, igual que Fidel y Raúl, son de los dirigentes más buscados por los terroristas. 
internacionales por el paralelismo yanqui para asesinarlo. Vamos para acá para la mano. Eh, empezó a comprar eh, ropa, llevar ropa, ropa interior, esto, la maleta. Los trajes se compraban por serie, ¿no? Serie, un montón de trajes, todos eran igual. Además, casi era la misma talla, casi todo. <ríe> y era calidad, más o menos igual, todo. Eh, la maleta, la maleta grandísima y todo eso, pero la maleta iba vacía. Ahora las dos camisas, dos calzoncillos, porque el traje todo estaba puesto. Entonces... Si todos éramos igual, negro, todos vestidos igual, llamaba la atención, ¿eh? Che Guevara's disguise was more discreet, and his group of 14 men landed in Tanzania without any prior warning. Che's presence had to remain secret, so his identity was not even divulged to the Lumumbists he had come to help. Kabila était tocar, on m'appelle, j'étais seul. On m'appelle, voilà, le groupe de d'instructeurs cubains est arrivé. À la tête se trouve le commandant Victor Drake, qui est un spécialiste du maquis. J'étais très impressionné et je suis devant Che Guevara déguisé. Je le reconnais pas. Bueno, Che, ça aussi, il y a un dictionnaire français, et soit il, pour aller ubicant le nom de chacun de nos compagnons. Dans le cas de moi, je me le l'uno qui est Moya. Y ellos, para el primero del uno, y es el más grande, que más manda el uno, tenía que ponerme a mí en moya. Se pone el tres tato, como médico y como traductor. Es decir, para que no hubiese duda de por qué Che, siempre que yo estaba, tenía que estar él. Ahora me dicen, ¿qué es que hacemos? Kabila no está aquí, no podemos ir aquí, porque el servicio de service espionaje británico trabaja aquí. Américain trabaja aquí. Français trabaja aquí. Hay que organizar muy, muy, muy rápido la descente hacia el frente. J'ai fait une communication à Kabila par téléphone, je l'ai appelé au Caire. Il a dit, ben, eh, il faut m'attendre, je viens tout de suite. Moi, je dis, je ne peux pas attendre, je peux pas l'attendre. Je vais les amener. The Cubans were taken by motorboat to the Lumumba's eastern front on the opposite shore of Lake Tanganyika. En medio de la noche, una noche muy oscura, sin mapa, sin una brújula, y ellos que sabían, y por ahí para allá. Y el barco aquí empieza a coger agua, empezamos a botar agua a todo el mundo, ahí a botar agua, a botar agua, porque no sabíamos, no se veía la orilla. Y aquí no se va a salvar nadie. Para... Y ellos encendiendo luces en medio de la noche para sacar el agua. Y el Che gritando, que no sientan las luces, y nosotros gritando y no nos entendían. Les noms qu'on nous a présentés, ce sont des noms numériques, quoi, arithmétiques, parce qu'ils disaient, voilà, celui-ci, c'est le commandant Moya, celui-ci, c'est Mbili, celui-ci, c'est Tatou. En Swahili, Moya, c'est un, Mbili, c'est deux, Tatou, c'est trois. Alors ça, on ne comprenait pas. Et on se demandait entre nous, on, on, on commentait, quoi, mais ces gens-là, leur nom, c'est le numéro. Il y avait deux blancs. Et Moja, on nous a présenté que c'est le chef du groupe, qui est le noir. Il disait que là, chez eux, au Akiba, il n'y a pas de racisme. Mais c'était étonnant. C'était difficile de comprendre qu'il euh, y a des pays où un noir dirige un blanc. Parce que nous, on nous a enseigné pendant la colonisation que le plus fort, le plus intelligent et le plus beau, c'est le blanc. Alors, comment est possible maintenant, dans ce pays-là, il y a un petit noir là qui dirige le blanc? The Cubans arrived in eastern Congo, believing that Kabila's men control two-thirds of the country's territory. But the situation had changed dramatically since Che had met the Lumumba's leaders a few months earlier. In the meantime, a number of Lumumbists had changed sides. Cleofas Kamita too, was now Mobutu's Minister of Interior, and it was his job to crush the rebellion. Nous avons organisé une opération de récupération du pays en utilisant l'armée, les mercenaires, recruter. Seule la définition classique de mercenaires, il va au plus offrant. Qui leur a offert C'est les États-Unis qui ont offert l'argent 
par mon bout interposé aux mercenaires pour qu'ils viennent combattre la rébellion. C'est les États-Unis. C'est Larry Devlin qui a dépensé tout l'argent pour empêcher la rébellion de gagner. Nous avions occupé la une très grande partie de la, de la République. En avril 65, nous, nous venions de perdre presque tous nos grands centres. Il nous restait des poches à l'intérieur. Et il fallait nous réorganiser. C'est en somme au moment où nous, nous venions déjà de subir un grand coup sur le plan militaire que nous, nous aurons alors l'information maintenant de l'arrivée des camarades cubains. Kabila was bogged down in internal divisions after the astounding defeat. So when the Cubans arrived in the rebel territory, coordinating military activities with them was hardly a priority. Alors, Che m'interpelle. Il me dit, écoute, et je vais te dire une chose. Rentre, va dire à Kabila, je suis Che Guevara et je l'attends ici. Et moi, j'ai dit, mamma mia, je dis, ma... Que fue quand elle empieza à gritar allí, escándalo international, sale de la, de la cabañita de la barraca aquella con las dos manos puestas en la cabeza, escándalo international, escándalo international, dice, chérez, cállate, cállate, pero no, que cállate, ¿no? gritando por todo aquello, eso. <laughs> parecía que tenía un, <laughs> un león detrás. <laughs> j'ai eu peur, j'ai eu une sueur froide le long de la colonne vertébrale. Je dis, ce n'est pas vrai. Quand je suis arrivé à Dar es Salaam, Kabila venait d'arriver du Caire, je l'ai raconté, et j'ai supplié Kabila d'aller rejoindre. Il a blémi avec sa face noire, il, a, il était sans drôle, il n'en revenait pas. C'était une grande responsabilité de cette personnalité, de l'envergure d'Ernest Che Guevara. L'inquiétude, c'était que si ça venait d'être connu par les Américains qu'Ernest Che Guevara est au Congo, que tout allait être déversé sur le Congo. Mais nous étions contents que les camarades soient là. Mais pas, mais pas lui, pas, pas, pas Che. Che's force was intended as a backup for the guerrillas. But the movement was in disarray, so the Cubans were ordered to wait in the camp until further orders. Very quickly, they realized that there was a huge cultural gap between them and the Africans. Quería enseñar a combatir algo. Se topó con obstáculos. Muy grande le faltaba esa cultura. Que la que yo digo cuando adquirían se volvía extraordinario soldado. El, el movimiento revolucionario africano, que el movimiento para todo por hacer. La experiencia, la preparación, la instrucción. Y fue una tarea dura. On pouvait dire qu'on avait pas de troupes. Parce qu'ils étaient désorganisés. Nous, normalement, on ne savait pas même pas des armes. On tirait, c'est tout. Alors, cela veut dire que je prenais une arme, je tirais devant, c'est fini. Sans direction de tir, sans une instruction. C'est chargé, tirer devant. Et là même, il fallait aussi avoir peur, parce qu'une balle de ton copain pouvait te prendre si tu n'étais plus devant, comme il, avait, il ne savait pas la discipline de tir. Il y avait qu'un calal le fusil, il y avait que... Ça, difficile pour persuader, parce qu'il y avait un habit, je ne sais pourquoi, mais ils ne pouvaient pas fermer un ojo. Pour buscar le ojo de la directrice, ils ne pouvaient pas faire. Donc, il y avait que taparle. Pour faire trinchera, il y avait ce problème aussi, parce que nous adoucions que la trinchera était un hueco, et que le hueco était pour les morts. Communications were difficult, and the Cubans were getting frustrated. In June, shortly before the anniversary of Congo's independence, a messenger arrived with instructions to attack the major enemy garrison at Fort Bandera. That was the turning point. Había que atacar ese día, Les vamos a atacar uno, vamos a hacer otra emboscada, vamos a atacar otro lugar con eso y sorprenderse, no, bandera, y entonces... Che no le quedó más remedio desde el punto de vista político de aceptarla, porque era 
estábamos allí y era una negativa en el único momento que ellos venían a pedir que le hiciéramos algo y decirle que no. A las 5 de la mañana, hora de aquel país, empezamos a tirotear el cuartel a fuego rasante contra el cuartel. Esa era la señal de, del ataque. Empezó el ataque, ellos inmediatamente respondieron, fue rapidísimo respondieron. Habían corrido ya la primera sangre. Era el primer combate que teníamos y ya habían cuatro muertos. Y la actitud que se había producido por parte de los guerrilleros congoleses, por lo que nos informaban los compañeros, no era muy bueno. Eso preocupó a Tato un poco. Él sabía que a partir de ahí le esperaba un, una situación bastante eh, embarazosa. The defeated Fort Bandera and the death of four Cubans compromised the secrecy that the Cubans had taken so much trouble to maintain. When the compañeros salen de Cuba, todo se le cambió la ropa. Nadie podía llevar nada que tuviera que ver con Cuba. Y hay un compañero que lleva un casoncillo que decía hecho en Cuba, que uno de los compañeros muerto. Lleva un casoncillo cuando lo cogen aparece un casoncillo hecho en Cuba. Aparece la característica, se percatan de que no son, no son africanos. There were rumors that there was a man known as Tatu, who was Cuban. Che Guevara had disappeared from Cuba, so it, could it be? Well, I suggested to Washington this must be the case, and they told me I was out of my mind, go on, don't, don't waste your time with ideas like that. But we did. Because I had some people that were, uh, shall we say, in contact with the rebels and working with them part of the time and part of the time against them. What we did, we did pictures of Che with beard, without beard, with mustache, no beard, with beard and mustache, Che with glasses, Che without glasses. And we showed them to these people. And one fight, I don't remember which combination it was, it came up with, ah, that's tattoo. When I concluded it must be Che, that told me that this is a Soviet operation. They don't want to use their own troops, they use surrogates. It was clear that there weren't a great many, but more could come. Clearly, they were getting their supplies, guns, ammunition, etc., coming across Lake Tanganyika. We supplied equipment to the Congolese to use, such as boats on the lake, to try and stop this supply chain that was coming. With the reinforcements, Mobutu's mercenaries started bombardments. The lake, which was a lifeline for the rebels, was constantly patrolled. The situation was critical, and Che's presence in the area further complicated the problem. They were encircled by the army of Mobutu, because they started to bombard it, although they had never bombarded it. Nous avons compris qu'ils veulent mettre le paquet et qu'ils nous ont repéré. Nous considérons qu'il était très dangereux à ce moment-là pour le Tché de rester à l'intérieur. Alors nous avons profité de ça pour dire voilà, c'est vraiment pas le moment, ça devient trop dangereux pour le convaincre de quitter momentanément le pays. Il ne voulait pas décrocher, il ne voulait pas partir. Je, je vis même, je dis mais c'est que c'est suicidaire. Si cet homme-là meurt ici, quelle responsabilité historique Oh, il fallait prier Dieu, même s'il si n'y avait pas de croyants. Même si parmi nous, il y avait ceux qui ne croyaient pas tout à fait en Dieu. En tous les cas, il fallait que Tché ne tombe pas sur le sol congolais. Parce que si jamais cela pouvait nous arriver, mais on allait avoir sur nos têtes toute la condamnation des de, 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 de révolutionnaires du monde entier. Et nous serions traités de, de tous les noms. But Che refused to leave. He insisted that the rebels should get organized. However, Che could not ignore the mounting international pressure against foreign troops in the Congo. The African Union met to condemn foreign intervention. Only this time, the African leaders did not just denounce Mobutu's mercenaries. They also criticized Cuba's support for the rebel forces. Nosotros no fuimos a hacer la guerra, nosotros fuimos a ayudar a hacer la guerra. Nosotros no fuimos a, 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 no fuimos invasores, 
ni somos, ni éramos mercenarios, ni fuimos a hacer la Nosotros fuimos a ayudar al movimiento de liberación, enseñándole a sus hombres y después incluso combatiendo junto con ellos. Pero si ellos no están dispuestos a combatir. Y además, fue una cosa eh, muy, muy dolorosa, ¿no? Esta, esta situación. La gente cuando venía, veníamos pensando todos, ¿qué dirá Fidel? ¿Qué dirá Fidel? ¿Qué dirá el comandante jefe? ¿Qué dirá el comandante jefe? ¿Ya? Porque tenía una confianza absoluta en, en el triunfo. No, no es Fidel. No, es con el comandante que teníamos enfrente, el Che. No, no había otro mejor. Es Fidel. Le manda un mensaje al Che. Si sí, hubiera habido que meter más tropas voluntarios había aquí. De sobra. Pero realmente que yo no tenía perspectivas. Entonces yo le pedimos que se repliegue. Y a aquella gente, en aquel fondo, pero entonces también le dijimos, pero bueno, que usted no es de aquí. Y usted está viendo, no es un problema interno de nosotros, ni interno de nadie, es una decisión de los pueblos africanos. Entonces ante eso no le quedó más remedio que retirarse. Y ya aceptó ir. Concretamente, cuando ya nos íbamos, él me dijo, oye, nos vamos a retirar. El perrito que está ahí, no lo deje. Y ese era un perrito chiquitico que él tenía allí. Y entonces, pero yo iba cargado. Entonces, ¿dónde me llevo el perrito? Entonces me lo metí por aquí. Me lo metí aquí, pero el perrito cuando va ahí, que vamos bajando la loma, que ya nos vamos retirando, ya nos dijo, nos vamos retirando, hay que tratar de llegar lo más rápidamente posible allí. ¿Me entiende? Que vamos a establecer contacto con Changa, que está en el lago. ¿Entiendes? Avanzamos. Y entonces el perrito me empieza a lamer. Y entonces aquello yo no lo podía aguantar. Y yo dije, oiga, voy a tener que botar el perro. Y me dijo, oye, aguanta con el perro ese que llegue hasta el lago. Y le dijo que habíamos perdido una batalla. Pero que no se había perdido la guerra. Quedaba mucho que hacer por la independencia de los pueblos y que esperaba que todos nosotros hiciéramos algo y que estudiáramos con ese espíritu de combatividad, de internacionalismo. Che's mission to the Congo had been a total failure, but that did not change Cuba's determination to continue its support for liberation movements. For Fidel Castro, it was the method, how and whom to help, that needed to be reconsidered. In January of 1966, only two months after Che retreated from the Congo, Cuba hosted an unprecedented gathering that included virtually every armed revolutionary movement from the three poorest continents. The Tricontinental Conference reinforced the island's role as the leader of internationalism. For Fidel, this was a good opportunity to assess the qualities of the revolutionaries he wanted to support. It was undoubtedly Amilcar Cabral who stole the limelight. Cabral, only 31 years old, was leading a fierce struggle against the Portuguese Empire in one of Africa's smallest and poorest nations, Guinea-Bissau. Esta conferencia, aquí en Cuba, territorio libre de América, el primer país socialista en el hemisferio occidental, es en realidad una gran promesa, una gran esperanza para todos los pueblos que luchan contra el imperialismo. Pero ya había una, un antecedente de América cuando se había entrevistado en el recorrido que hace el Che por distintos países que llega a Conakry, tiene la oportunidad de hablar con América. Y el Che dice que uno de los movimientos de liberación más serios que hay en ese momento y de más posibilidad en ese momento es el movimiento de la liberación de la colonia de Guinea Bissau y Cabo Verde. Après les grands discours de Fidel Castro, Amilcar Cabral fait un discours remarquable. Il a caractérisé, je m'appelle ça, très bien la situation en Afrique, en partir de son propre pays, en parlant des ethnies, 
en parlant d'état de, de pauvreté, d'exploitation, pour justifier l'idée de conduire la lutte armée, c'est parce qu'il n'y avait pas autre voie. Parce que les grandes puissances s'opposaient à, à l'indépendance des communes portugaises, par exemple. For years, Amilcar's struggle was not of much consequence. But when the guerrillas started capturing territory, suddenly the importance of this neglected colony became evident. For Portugal, much more was at stake in Guinea-Bissau. This tiny colony could prove to be the empire's Achilles heel. Y se liberaba Guinea-Bissau, y así se demostró después. Se desprendía la liberación del resto de los de los países de, de habla portuguesa que he colonizado. Entonces, allí era estaba el eslabón más flojo que tenían de la cadena, desde el punto de vista de los portugueses. No podían permitir, tuvieron hasta que hicieron todo el esfuerzo para no permitir que se dejara ninguna de las colonias, y mucho menos Guinea, que iba a ser el ejemplo del resto de las colonias para su liberación. Et nous n'avions pas beaucoup de richesses à ce moment-là. La Guinée devait recevoir de l'argent du Portugal. C'était un pays où on faisait l'agriculture, pas plus. L'agriculture arriérée, on faisait la, la Guinée. Hein? Et tandis que ce n'était pas le cas en Angola où il y avait des, des immigrés, qui étaient des commerçants, des hommes d'affaires. C'était des richesses, des richesses de l'Angola et de Mozambique qu'ils voyaient. Parce que la Guinée n'a rien fait. The Portuguese were aware of their weakness, but they held a trump card. The government leased a strip of land on the Azores Islands to the U.S. Defense Department. That airbase was used to protect American allies in the east, like Israel and Saudi Arabia. But the lease was renewable annually, so Portugal had every intention to use the Azores airbase as a bargaining chip. Well, under the fascist regime uh, of Portugal, Angola and Mozambique and Guinea-Bissau were part of Portugal. So the idea of giving up these colonies uh, was unthinkable for that regime. So if we went to them and said, look, you must get out of Angola, we'll be very upset with you and all that, they could, might well have cut us out of the Azores. So uh, NATO and the Cold War was far more important to us. There was a special law about not allowing U.S. arms given to Portugal to use them in, the, in, the, uh, in Africa, but they did violate it, and we didn't do anything about it. We, in fact, we did not cut them off, even though we knew that they were using them. We didn't want to put them in this war in the west and the west. We didn't want to put them in the west. Mais malgré que beaucoup de gens disaient que ce sont des communistes, sont des communistes. beaucoup de gens disaient ça, mais ils n'avaient pas de preuves. Comme disait Amilcar, nous étions des nationalistes africains, sans option idéologique. Amilcar knew that it would be difficult to avoid labeling his movement, and having Cuban fighters would do little to dispel the belief that they were firmly allied to the Eastern Bloc. But he had a vision and a very clear strategy as to how to fight his battle for independence. Es decir, que América no llega pidiendo, deme hombres, mándeme hombres, ¿no? Teníamos la idea de que habíamos sacado ya del Congo, de que venían a venir más tropas de cubanos a ayudar a América. Y en aquel momento América no quería más tropas de cubanos. Son los guineanos que tienen que luchar. Y tú metes un batallón ahí, va a ser el batallón y no los cangros. Y tienen que aprender, mediante la lucha, prepararse para, cuando, para la victoria. Es una idea muy... Aunque fuera un poco más larga la lucha, era una idea muy interesante de ir forjando en medio de la lucha la nación. Hay que forjar una nueva nación, además, tribus diferentes, solo la lucha puede unirla. Che's defeat in the Congo was still a fresh wound, and Fidel began to consider how his help could be more effective. This time, the bulk of Cuban support came in the form of artillery experts, doctors, and technicians. Soldiers would go only if requested. They also took some lessons from the debacle in Congo. In Guinea-Bissau, the involvement was quite different. It was more of, in a good sense, technical nature of helping local forces of AGC, the army, especially helping in those specialities when they had 
had not got enough expertise, you see, to fight Portuguese. So it's more of, in the good sense, supportive role, you see. Amilcar had no illusions about his capacity to defeat the mighty Portuguese empire. He wanted to wear them down in order to get them to the negotiating table. In the conversation that he has with me, in the front, he explains that he was based on not attacking the quarters with the intention to destroy them. Because there was not sufficient force in the conditions at that moment for that. I wanted to be angry, to get up, 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 to get up. The war escalated, and the Portuguese sent 22,000 more soldiers. Amilcar's demoralization tactics had worked. The Portuguese felt trapped. Veteran captains from the colonial army in Guinea-Bissau decided to take the initiative in their own hands. It was they who overthrew the dictatorship, creating the Carnation Revolution in Portugal. And within months, the Portuguese colonial empire crumbled like a house of cards. In every this liberation movement, there was no military victory, never. And they did not destroy the colonial machine, but they created, even vis-a-vis -vis Algeria and the France for that matter, they created such a situation that before getting victory, they obliged, they forced the enemy to retreat, to come to some compromise. Usually it's uh, in the form, it's compromise. In the essence, it's the victory of the liberation forces. That's exactly happened in each and every country. The Portuguese army left Guinea-Bissau in October 1974. But the man who pushed the empire over the brink was not there to witness the fruits of his struggle. Amilcar Cabral was killed a year earlier by members of the Portuguese secret police. The who's who of revolutionaries gathered at Amilcar's tomb. Beside Fidel Castro stood Agostino Neto, the leader of Angola's liberation movement. Cuba had for years been supporting Neto's movement, but the scale of Fidel Castro's military involvement in Angola after the collapse of the Portuguese empire would soon change the face of the continent. See part two next Tuesday at 10.30 here on BBC4. The wave of independence in Africa was spreading like wildfire. That year alone, 17 African countries gained independence and 30 others started their revolutionary armed struggle. African revolutionaries were looking to the Cubans as a model for their own independence. Cuba was living proof that David could beat Goliath. Congo, 
que muestra cómo se puede burlar con la más absoluta impunidad, con el cinismo más insolente, el derecho de los pueblos. Che Guevara was revolted, and his speech gave a clear signal that Cuba intended to act. The case of Patrice Lumumba in the Congo was symbolic of how African independence would be crushed by Cold War strategic de l'esclavage, comment ils ont lutté pour nous sortir des maladies du sommeil, et patati patata. Ça a été un choc. Nous ne nous attendions pas à ce rappel malheureux parce que nous estimions que le roi Baudouin n'avait plus de leçons à nous faire hein, ce jour-là. À ce moment-là, le monde se lève, qui n'était pas programmé comme devant parler à ce moment-là. Il se lève et il parle. Il fait un discours très militant. Combattant de l'indépendance, aujourd'hui victorieux, je vous salue au nom du gouvernement congolais. Nous avons connu les ironies, les insultes, les coups que nous devions subir matin, midi et soir parce que nous étions des nerfs. Rappelez-vous comment on traitait le blanc par rapport au noir. Rappelez-vous dans les écoles quelle place nous occupions. Rappelez-vous tout l'apartheid. Alors évidemment, réaction immédiate de toute la délégation de l'Interest. It was Lumumba's assassination that sparked a new era for many African revolutionaries. And with it started the epic of Cuba and Africa. the Congo, one of the largest and richest countries on the continent. The Belgian colony was demanding immediate independence. Patrice Lumumba, the young articulate clerk, led the movement that negotiated a peaceful solution to end Belgian rule. On June 30th, 1960, King Baudouin arrived in Leopoldville the capital named after his great uncle, to hand over power. Le roi Baudouin était dans une voiture découverte. Il saluait la foule, etc. Un Congolais s'est précipité sur la voiture. J'ai vu les, les gardes du roi dégainer. Et tout le monde avait peur, se disait, il va tuer le roi. Non, il a simplement sorti l'épée du roi de sa gueule. Et il s'est mis à danser avec cette épée. Euh, C'est très symbolique, ça. C'est comme s'il lui a arraché le pouvoir. On Independence Day, all the dignitaries assembled in Parliament. King Baudouin was to announce the transfer of power to the new government. Patrice Lumumba had just been elected prime minister. But the euphoria of independence did not last long. That same day, Lumumba lit a fire that spread through the entire continent. L'indépendance du Congo constitue l'aboutissement de l'œuvre conçue par le génie du roi Léopold II. Le discours du roi Baudouin, qui nous rappelait comment la Belgique nous a. July 1991 in Havana. It is Nelson Mandela's first trip outside Africa since his release from 27 years of prison. But why would the legend of struggle against oppression decide that the first person he wants to thank for helping to end apartheid is Fidel Castro, the very man who is regarded in the West as an oppressor of his own people? Fidel Castro and 500,000 Cubans took part in the African wars, which ultimately ended colonialism. This little-known story began in 1960, only a year after Cuban revolutionaries triumphed. 
Their struggle had captured people's imagination, and the young feisty leaders, Fidel Castro and Che Guevara, emerged from three years of guerrilla war as heroes.